Kenny. Hello, John. Uh, what do we got here, buddy? Today we're going to be talking about um, uh, Persona 5. Is that what it is? Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, totally like, forgot. Sitting we got this game we're going to talk about. Sitting here for, looking at the video it, and yeah. completely forgot. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've been playing a ton of this game, John. Uh-huh. Um, Persona 5 is great. It looks beautiful. Like, it's, this yeah, is... Yeah, you know, you wouldn't know that this was made for the PS3. Uh-huh. Um, but, like, it's just got so much style to it. I, I keep coming back to that, too. Like, how... What does this look like on PS3? Yeah, you know, I don't know. Um, because I'll, I'll play it on his PS4. They didn't. They didn't really market that they were going to be putting it on PS3. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, let's kind of jump into to what what's going on in this game. So I'll jump into anything you want. This is beautiful. Let's okay. Go. Um. So, first off, you know, it's a typical Persona game. Uh huh. You start off, and you're. I don't want to give away any store any story spoilers, but you're a a bad kid who's been sent away. Oh, I'm bad. Um, and you're going. You're you're playing through the story of like what he's going through and all of that. Um. But, you know, you soon find out that there is another world and you're trying to, you're a cat burglar. A whole new world. Kind of. <laughs> and you're trying to steal the treasure from this uh, other world. Okay. So, the thing I love about Persona is it's got loads of style. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just... Like, yeah, everything is like the menus, weird angles, bright colors, yeah, everything awesome animations. Looks amazing. Like e- even the menus, they just I know. look and feel so It's like fun. everything's got a little bit of a uh, like pizzazz, you Yeah. Know? Um, you know, so starting off with uh, you want to start off with the combat? Yeah, absolutely. Uh so the combat the it is kind of the most boring part of the game. What? Honestly. Yeah, right. You don't have a game unless you have that that key thing. Game, yeah, game you would play. think so, right. Gameplay. Um but the combat like because of, you know, you're basically just trying to knock hit enemies weak, enemies weak point, points. Excuse okay. me. Uh, so or each points. Points. Yeah. So each enemy is weak against some element. Uh huh. So you're trying to find out what that element is and then knock them down so you can do a super move or you can capture them as your persona. So it's Pokemon. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. You, so once once you have them on the ground, you'll go in and go to a dialogue where you can either ask them for an object. So you can say, hey, give me an item. Mm-hmm. You can ask them for money. Or you can select one specific one and ask it to join your team. Okay. So by asking it to join your team, you're going to get, then go through a dialogue option list of like, that persona is going to have its own personality that you've got to be able to manipulate into wanting to join your team. Nice. So one of the one of the funniest ones I came across so far was, uh, it was like this ghost half of a horse, mm-hmm. um, and it was it was a really sarcastic thing, and it wanted me to be extremely sarcastic to it. Okay. So like so the, like ghosty horse up front, carcass in the back. Kind ghosty of thing? horse that faded into nothing. Okay. Like okay. like it had like ribbons of extra horse floating in the back. Sure. But, sure. Uh, but I remember talking to it, and it basically just told me like whenever I walked up to it, it was like, "Hey, you're just a kid. You shouldn't even be here." And then I was like, mm. "Well, I just kicked your ass, didn't I?" Yeah. And then from there, the horse was like, "Oh, I like you. You know, we're we're friends now." Yeah. Um. So I mean, is there an emphasis on you know gotta catch them all? Um. Kind of, you're just trying to grow your personas to be more and more strong because you can okay. only hold seven personas. Okay. At the okay. beginning of the game. Then so, can as you, you store additional personas in a later bank in the or game. something? No, not. You can't store them. You can register them. Okay. Uh, with, uh, I think his name is Igor, is how you pronounce it? Igor? Igor, maybe, yeah. Sure. Um, but you, you store or you register your personas with him, and then you can, for a price mm-hmm. of in game currency, you can uh, pull them up at any time. Okay, so. Can you tell me something about this? I've, I've from the gameplay that I've seen, there's something really intriguing where there's like a uh, like a stealth element. Yeah, so you 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 don't want to get caught because if you get caught, and this is, this is persistent throughout the game, then so yeah. it's not just like a little snippet right. of what yeah, I saw. You're a burglar, so you don't want to okay. be caught. Okay, uh, makes if sense. you get caught, you you then raise the awareness level of whoever's in the castle so, or what have you. So is that like a persistent thing when you're outside of combat? You're trying to stealth around and attack uh, no, people. N- n- yeah, inside the inside the I can't remember what they call it, inside the Nether World. Yes, yeah. um, um, because you know right now you're seeing gameplay from inside the the Nether World, mm-hmm. and you're, we're trying to stealth around and stealth and teleport around. And I'm guessing if you can stealthily attack them from that position, from you get behind, like a, you, you'll get like a a, a little like a modifier pop up that says bu- uh, ambush, and you, all your team will get to go first. Nice. Okay. Uh, and then you know you can knock them th- knock them down, and yep. then go into the the animation. 
So what I, what I like about it too is the combat looks really fast and fluid. Yeah, it's so all I'm, I'm super surprised fluid. to hear you say that the combat's not the best part. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's bad, and, uh-huh. and it's not that it's unfun. It's just to me that's the the, the part where compared, I'm like compared to the bigger parts of, of a game. Yeah. So so you know we've we've talked quite extensively about the con- the combat now. Um, what I, I'll tell you my favorite part of the game is actually the Japanese high school sim part. Um, that's that's the part that sounds terrible to me. You know, you would think that, but it's actually really, really fun. Um, so, you know, you, you have all these different pieces of the world that you can go and explore and go check out. Like, you can go buy weapons from a shady uh, dealer. By the way, not real guns. You're using toy guns because in the netherworld... In the netherworld, the toy they, guns are real. Right. Nice. Yeah, so, um, you know, you always have your little cat Morgana with you. Uh-huh. Um, so you that, that cat does not take up one of your seven persona slots, then? No, it's it's actually a part of your team. Okay. Um, so is it, like, an, a team member that has its own moves? Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, nice. so you... Uh, I, I mean, minor so, spoiler, you meet him very early on in the game, and... He comes with you for the rest of the game. Okay, much. so hit me with some of the landscape here. Is is the world? Is it kind of like Digimon Cyber Sleuth or Yakuza, where you have different districts and whatnot that yeah, you go so, to and visit? Yeah, so you have um, shops. Right, right and... now, I have three main spots where I can go, and there's shops. There's a batting cage and one that will help you increase like your guts and okay, um, like each. So you can spend your time however you want. Mm-hmm. So if you want to increase your knowledge, you go to the library, rent a book, and then read that book to get your knowledge to go up. Like the, an actual stat, right? Yeah, and, and, and so... So do you pay to do that? Like, what's um, the... If you go to the library, no, you can get the books for free. Otherwise, you have to buy the books. Okay. The The benefit to these things is if you increase your knowledge or guts or whatever, you know, there's like five main stats that you, you want to try to increase. Mm-hmm. If you increase those enough, they unlock different dialogue and okay. uh, story options. So That's neat. Yeah, so the other day, one of my, one of my team members uh was talking to me about she was depressed and you know she she wanted to hang out with someone mm-hmm. but my character didn't have enough guts to ask her out sure so because of that i went and started working on my guts to get that up so i w- could ask her on a date no so what's um, to keep you from just uh just spamming reading books or you know just the the you have a time limit on oh, when okay. you can do things so okay they, they will say you know you have until this ec- date before x ha- x bad thing happens sure so you want to make sure you get all the you know your castle so done do you have or a, what have you do you have a time limit before the game ends yes you won't, this game only lasts a year oh like a wow so wow. so this is the first persona game to do that that's ballsy. Yeah. Because so, usually people do, I mean, it's like the Dead Rising series. Like, people yeah. do not like timers. But, you know, this one doesn't feel too punishing. Okay. So this one, like, even though there's a timer, yeah, it sucks that, like, you know, your days are going by and all that, but it makes it feel like there's another dimension to the game because you're trying to get as much stuff done in as little time as possible. I feel like it kind of fits with the cat burglar theme, too. Yeah. Like the, the hasty, you know. Yeah, you're trying to get all this stuff done. And um, the other thing I really like is the fact that, you know, they've incorporated new technology. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you are, you get text messages from your teammates, and they will, uh, you know, talk to you, ask you to come hang out, and, yeah. you know, you can actually have dialogue options with your teammates without having to go see them. Yeah. Um, you know, whenever you're building a relationship with your teammates, you get different, um, you can actually gain, like, stat bonuses from, from hanging out with them or doing things for them. Um, like there's an owner of a shop that you live with that if you make coffee with him, you'll gain. I think it's um, I think it's stamina um, because you're learning you're learning to trade and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And it just feels really nice. Like I, I really like the game. It's everything's been great so far. So there's also like dating sim elements as well. Yeah, um, those aren't as prevalent so far as they've been uh, in well, the other ones. Let, let me ask you, like, why do those? Like, what's the What's what's the benefit? Why? So the whole thing that you're trying to do is build a deeper relationship with each person on your team okay. or each each of your, they call them like confidants. Yeah. So you're trying to build a deeper rapport with them, and that gives you more abilities with that, that person. Okay, so you're trying to be friends with everyone, but you're also, but there's also ones that you can romance. Yeah, and, you know, you're, you're also trying to make your character happy as well. Okay. And trying to, like, okay. understand, like, more of his life and all that stuff, which, you know, I think adds a really interesting... Then let him sleep till 10 a.m., give him a big cup of coffee when he wakes up, and, yeah, you know, and let yeah. him sit around in shorts all day. Uh, yeah, you don't end up doing that much, okay. <laughs> uh, even though that's how you play the game, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but, yeah, sometimes people will ask you to help them do stuff, and you have the choice of declining or helping them. Um, there's an interesting doctor character that wants you to take place in clinical trials. 
Wow. Um, she's like a a homeopathic doctor that is giving you like some some back. Door drugs that I thought you were gonna say she gives you some backwash. <laughs> no, no, no. She she gives you like these these drugs that she's making. Um, and you know that's always fun to go to her and see like what happens to your character in that little bit of time. So, yeah, yeah. It's it's really neat though. Jeez. Okay, so we we've touched on the the world a little bit. We've touched on combat. Uh, how's the story itself? Is it, is it paced? So okay, so a lot. It, it is a Japanese ass. JRPG. Mm-hmm. Um, like, so, we know there were cat burglars. We right. get that. So, I, I don't want to go into too much of the story because, it, like, anything I tell you is kind of a potential spoiler. Well, hit me, hit me with the early loose bullet points. Like, okay, so so your character is sent away because he did something bad. Uh huh. You got uh, that. You are, you, you are sent to live with whoever would take you in, which is this old, kind of mysterious shop owner. Mm hmm. Um, you're living with him, and he's basically telling you, you mess up, you're out, you're done. Um, you know, you're not, you've been nothing but trouble for everyone else who who you talk to, and that's kind of been a little bit of annoyance with the game. Is everyone yeah. keeps reminding you your character of how bad of a fuck up he is, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's a typical like anime theme. Like, yeah, that really. Yeah, and they really drive that home yeah. in the early portions of the game. Sure. Um, and then you start you you make a friend at school, and that friend ends up having a problem with someone else in the school. And you find out why. Okay. And that keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, but the the story is paced in a in a way where the first probably well I mean is it too much to give away like what how they end up with the netherworld connotation or slant or how, yeah. how it leads into that yeah. it's, it's too much yeah um, oh man yeah I, I mean I can talk to you about it off the podcast but um, or off this episode and but yeah I don't want to give it away here because it's it's kind of a big deal in the in the story lore okay um, okay but so one of the things is. If you do not like kind of being spoon fed a little bit in the beginning of a game, like probably the first eight hours is basically a tutorial. Jesus. But you, you say that, but it's really not that bad because okay. ha- they're building characters. They're uh-huh. doing something that Final Fantasy 15 didn't do, uh-huh. which is building relationships, building you as a character, and building the people around you as characters mm-hmm. so that you care about them and you want to see them succeed. But it's not like Final Fantasy thirteen. It's actually pulling it off. Yeah, like it's, it's not making it. Yeah, you you don't feel a like slog. Yeah, you don't feel like you're just going from from point to point doing like mm-hmm. uh, tutorial stuff. It actually feels like you're playing the game, but the tutorial stuff just happens to be in the game. Yeah, and then then at that point, once you get through all that, they let you go and say, okay, do whatever you want for yeah. the next couple of days. And so you never get to the point where you're like, oh my god, just let me play the game. Yeah, I it's, I didn't feel that way at least. Um, I can understand if someone did, but for me, I really really enjoyed all the beginning stuff because it got me to the point to where I really cared about everyone they had introduced me to, and I wanted to see. And I'm guessing in that case that the story and the character building is fleshed out enough to carry you through that. Yeah, yeah, in a satisfying way. Yeah, everything so far has been very satisfying. The the ending to the first arc, the first thirty days of the game, Mm -hmm. was very, very satisfying and felt really like emotional, Mm -hmm. and you know that was really nice. And I'm on the, I'm kind of on the second half of the second portion of the game, the second arc. Okay. Um, and, you know, I'm starting to kind of get to where I'm getting more and more stuff to do, like, constantly. So it, it become like... Does it become overwhelming where you're having to manage your time and decide, like, okay, I want to do this, but I don't have enough time to do b- both of these things, kinda, right? Kind of. So you have to choose? Kind of, but but no, not really. So if you, <laughs> if you can finish off the dungeon before the time that is that you're told that it needs to be done, mm-hmm. then you just have ex- a bunch of extra days to go and do whatever you want. Okay. So you have free time if you want. Um, so does it have like an in-game real-time timer that's going by in the background? No, no. It's it's all in-game time. So if you, you know, let's say that you're, you're told to go break into the palace and steal the treasure, mm-hmm. but you have until the, the 30th of May to do it. Okay. If you go and have it done by the 2nd of May, which is, well, let's say by the 10th of May, you mm-hmm. still have 20 days of of actual in-game time okay. to do. It doesn't just skip to the 30th and say, oh, well, you lost those 10 days. Mm-hmm. You you still have those 10 days to go and, like, read books or, you know, grow your relationships with your characters or anything well, you want to do. Well, what I'm getting at is, is there a like is there an in-game clock that is ticking by, like, no. as you play, like, as um, you're just running around? I mean, you, like, you, you can see up in the upper right-hand or left-hand corner that there's, like... A time, 
of the day, mm-hmm. but that that changes based on whatever they're you know they have something that that changes that on whenever you do a an action. That's what I was getting yeah. at. So whenever you do an action, it takes a, a certain amount of time yeah. that day. That yeah, makes so, sense. So okay. it, you know if like right now like if it was daytime and you went and hung out with someone, mm-hmm. it would be evening whenever you got done. That makes yeah. That makes sense. And then more you could sense. go do one more thing. So if I just want to run up and down the road one hundred times, it's not going to make. It's any not going to make any time go by. And yeah. if you go and buy books or something like that, it's not going to make any time go. It's only okay. whenever you take an actual action. Like that, the, that makes sense. One of the funny that's things, more forgiving for yeah, sure. One of the funny things is, uh, in order to increase your guts, you can go and eat a a really big hamburger uh-huh. at a restaurant. So, <laughs> um, but you want to wait till evening to do that. That's the optimal time because it's cheaper. Uh huh. So you go and eat that big hamburger, and like it's funny because they have different levels of giant hamburgers for you to eat. Okay. Um, so you know it's actually kind of funny. Um, it's a very unique taste take on. A JRPG, and I, I'm really loving that. So let's talk about some of the things I'm hearing, Kenny. Okay. Like, how how do you feel about the sound design? Oh man, the sound it sounds good. It's pretty good. Yeah, like, the music is great. Uh-huh. Um, it's it's super like J-pop, but mm-hmm. I love it. It's so it's so catchy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, is there any other questions you have, John? Mm, uh, how do uh, how do I play this as soon as possible? <laughs> uh, it's on Amazon. Uh, I think you can actually actually still get the steel book, um, the steel case from Amazon too. Man, I, yeah. th- the more I see it, the more I, I'm thinking like I need this game. The more I'm wondering why the hell do I own Mass Effect Andromeda and not this? And not now, this. Game. I will warn you, John. This is a hundred hour game, easy. And yeah. I've, I've put 24 hours into it now. I sacrificed sleep for two weeks to put 130 plus hours into, into, Breath, into Breath of the Wild. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I think this would be another game that you would easily do that with. Because, yeah. um, man, it's just so good. I, my, my body is willing, Kenny. Yeah, I, I highly <laughs> recommend it. Um, it. Honestly, I can't talk enough about how great this game is. I don't know of why anyone would bash it because it's just... To me, this has been like it felt like someone wrote a love letter of JRPG and just sent it to me. Mm-hmm. So on a buy, wait, rent scale, buy, buy, Absol- absolutely I, buy. <laughs> I mean, for the amount of enjoyment you're going to get out of this, mm-hmm. and the amount of hours it's going to take you to play it, yep, it's absolutely worth buying. I, I think I'm with you. Yeah, I think I'm with you. Thanks, Kenny. Yeah, no problem. It's been Persona Five, hardly casual. We're over, and I think we're out. Yeah.